And here is one of those treat yourself moments. What are you bringing home now? Me, you. George, you're gonna be happy to know that I didn't smuggle home any plants today. Hi, it's Steph. And last time we were together, we worked on cleaning out this area where all of this beautiful hellebore is now in bloom. And I actually picked up three new hellebore at the nursery that I have since planted. I put one here, one there, and another in the back there. And my goal is over time to fill this whole back area with different varieties of hellebore because they are really just such beautiful plants. But what I wanna show you is this back here. This shrub here is called a Pyrus japonica, also known as Japanese Andromeda. And it is a beautiful evergreen shrub that blooms in late winter, early spring. I actually noticed this was in bloom yesterday on the first day of spring, which was a really pleasant surprise. I actually have two of them growing in my garden. I have this one here and another there. Now this shrub is hardy in USDA zones five through nine. And this for me here is the first time that I've seen it bloom in my garden because I have had it for three years and the first year it was in bloom at the garden center. The second year, which was last year, I didn't get blooms because we had a really cold snap and it zapped all of the bloom buds. But this year we've had a really mild winter and they've performed beautifully. So this one here you can see has these really beautiful little pink bell shaped blooms that are really dainty and just really pretty. Now the variety here is called Valley Rose, Pyrus japonica, and this one gets to be about four feet tall and wide. So they're both pretty compact, but these can get pretty large. There are some varieties that can get upwards of 10 feet tall and wide. So you'd wanna research which one so that you can see if it would fit into your garden. But I also have this one here, which, and it is the Monrovia, Enchanted Forest Impish Elf. And it's also a dwarf variety, staying at only about three to four feet tall and wide. And you can see here that this one is just starting to open up and it has a little bit of a deeper pink color, which is also really beautiful. So if you are looking for a shrub that does well in a part shade situation, I have it here planted in a part shade in my woodland garden and it is performing really well. Here are some spring planters that I made up that are looking really good. All of the tulips are starting to poke through and the grape hyacinth. Now these I prepared in the fall with the exception of the two tall planters in the back. Those I just recently did. So what I do is the two large ones in the back I use for my winter arrangements. So when I'm done with the winter arrangements at some point at the end of January, I take them apart and the bulbs I keep in a grocery paper bag, a paper grocery bag so that no light gets in. And I keep them in the refrigerator to keep them chilled. And then I do up these pots here and I bring them outside. I have hyacinth in here and tulips. So now it's time to move them to the front porch. And all of these other ones I've had done since the fall. And what I did was I kept them underneath our patio so that they wouldn't get too much rain because I didn't want to risk rotting my bulbs. So now they are ready to take their home in the front porch so that they can bloom for us in the next six weeks or so, maybe even sooner. So grateful for my garden assistant. What a good helper. I know these are really happy. I could probably handle the smaller ones on my own, but I always ask George for help with these larger ones because once they have soil in them, they get really heavy. So those always go at the top. I have to get my saucers on uh, underneath them so that when they drip water, it doesn't stain the porch. I mean, we still get a little bit of it, but not as bad with a saucer. And then these white ones on the very bottom step. All right, one more trip should do it. A couple of years ago, I had seen Claus Dalby. He does such a beautiful arrangement with a ton of pots for his spring display. So I was inspired by that to have a cluster of pots on either side of the porch with spring blooming daffodils and tulips and hyacinth. So um, that is what I'm doing. I did it last year and it looked really pretty. Um, and I guess it is time to get the Christmas mats off We're the porch, slacking. right? We are slacking. All right, let's get the rest of them. Here are the rest of my planters. And I really love like the basket weave look. And I often get questions about this particular planter here when I plant it up or show it in videos. And this is actually a plastic material. So it is safe to be outside in the elements. And I purchased this a couple of years ago at TJ Maxx. They usually have them this time of year in the spring. And what I did, sometimes when you plant up baskets, because of all of the, the grooves in the basket, your soil will come out. But 
I figured out that if I use a grow bag, this is, I believe a seven gallon, but I'll confirm that. I'll put the link below um, from where I bought these on Amazon. But if I line the basket with a grow bag, this is a great option to keep your soil in your basket containers. So whether you find some like this at TJ Maxx like I did, or you use a regular traditional basket, this is a great option for lining your basket to hold your soil inside a fabric grow bag. All right, these are gonna bloom pretty soon. We got the new rug for the season to replace the Christmas ones. Let me give you an update on some of the seedlings that we started growing together back in the beginning of February. Some of them actually um, already needed to be potted up. So here is my Dalmatian peach foxglove that I recently went ahead and put in some bigger pots. This is the forget-me-nots that also seem to be doing pretty well. And these are my black devil pansies. It's hard to see these here, let's see. But there they are. So I've started to work on potting these up, but we ran out of potting soil, so I'm gonna have to go pick some up. So we'll go ahead and do that together. And um, here are my marigolds. So you can see they're doing really well, screaming to get out of these little trays. And this here is the straw flower. And the fever few also germinated really well. And these are the Sahara rudbeckia. These are putting on some good size. This is some Ageratum Blue Fortune. But yeah, these are these are really, some of them are growing slower than others, right? It all depends on the variety. This here is Aster, which I decided to grow uh, maybe like a week after we had sown all of these seeds. I found some of this in my stash, my seed stash, and I said, you know, I'm going to give these another shot. These are the Aster Janina, which is a really pretty like um, apricot peach colored Aster so these really need to get out of here. The leaves are starting to yellow, so I think they're getting a little stressed. So definitely have to pick up some potting soil. This is also a plant that I just recently sowed because I want to try growing it this year, and it is called stock. Now these, the variety that I chose, I purchased these seeds on Baker Creek, and I'm growing the um, stock Cedo Chandler Apricot, the Alto Red, and the Marisaki No Uda. And they are really pretty, but they're single flowers. So for each plant, you're only going to get one bloom. So I was kind of new to growing stock. I didn't know a whole lot about it. But after I found that out, there's also varieties that are branching. So I'm going to grow this this year as an experiment because I want to see what they smell like. Apparently, they smell wonderful. And if I like them, then I will try a branching variety next year. But yeah, the seedlings are looking really good. Let's go ahead and pick up some soil. And I think we're also going to stop at TJ Maxx and see if they have any good pots. I'm at my local Ace Hardware and we're going to pick up a bag of potting soil. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, over the last couple of years, I've used the Coast of Maine soils in my garden and I absolutely love them. I find them far superior to any other soil that I've used before. There's not a lot of fillers that you get with some other soils like the twigs and the sticks and they have really good quality ingredients. So for example, here the potting soil is enriched with compost, lobster meal and kelp meal. And you can use it for houseplants, flowers, vegetables, herbs and container gardens and it has a natural slow release nitrogen. So I really love that for any container gardening, potting up uh, seedlings and so forth. And anytime that I plant anything in the ground, I'm gonna go with their organic lobster compost or their composted manure blend. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you. But this stuff is also amazing. It has a lobster and crab blend and the plants absolutely love this stuff and so do I. But let me show you the other one that I like to use. This is the composted manure blend. And just last fall when we created that new garden bed right behind our patio wall, I used this blend to plant in all of those new evergreens that we had purchased. So some really good stuff. So if you're looking to try some new soils this season, I've been really happy with the Coast of Maine. Um, I buy it here at my local Ace. It's sold at any independent nursery or garden center. And if you have an Ace hardware near you, you can probably find it there too. What are you bringing home now? Thanks. Jeez. You, what is this? Look, what is this? We've been working on a garden project, a refresh on our vegetable garden that I'll be growing some cut flowers in this season. And I actually just bought myself a new arbor for that project. So we've been taking footage and we'll share that with you um, as soon as everything is complete. All right, we're at TJ Maxx. Let's go see if we can find any cool gardening stuff, some planters, pots, or maybe even some of those baskets like I have in my garden. 
Ooh, they have a lot of spring pots in. I've already seen some really cool things. So let's walk around and take a look. Look at this. If you want a box wood topiary, but you don't want to do the maintenance of pruning and trimming it, they have this faux one here, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer the real thing, but you'll never have to trim it again. How much is this? $29.99. Look at that. It's just a sphere. And then you just sit it on a pot. You have an instant display. But the pots are really pretty. Look at that. They look like an embossed plaster. They're pretty lightweight, even though they're kind of large. You would think they'd be pretty heavy. And this one here looks like maybe a 15 inch pot or so. $24.99. I always find that these places have really good prices on good like pots like these, like the ceramic or the porcelain feel ones. This one here is $14.99. I really love this uh, royal blue or cobalt blue. They have different sizes too. So if you wanted to do a set with like different size planters, there is a smaller one and then there's a larger one. Oh, I really like this white one with that dot pattern. So it looks like all the larger size ones are $24.99 and then the eight inch ones range from $7.99 to like $10.99 and then the middle of the line size like maybe the 10 to 12 inch appear to be somewhere in that $16.99 price range it's all going to depend on the pot but I mean really reasonable so far the most expensive one I've seen is this large one for $24.99 they have some sets down here they're like nested in one another but you buy them separately it's like an aqua blue color Look at this cute statue. This is a great place for some garden statuary too. I usually bring mine into the shed here in my zone six because we get winters just to keep them looking in good shape for longer. I don't leave them out year round. I usually bring them in, but I have some frog statues out in my garden as well. I wonder how much this one is. It's pretty lightweight too, $24.99. I like them like sitting under a tree. I think it looks really cute. I really love these pots here. Remind, what is it, the chinoiserie, is that what they call it? It's a fancy word for it, but the blue and white pottery, beautiful. This has a really nice shape. Now there isn't a drain hole on this one. So if you put a plant in there, you just have to be careful with watering so that it doesn't, you know, stay sitting in too much water. But this one here, I checked it out before. It's $24.99 for that there. Beautiful. I love the shape on that one, like that oval shape, really unique. But this is the spot. TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods. This time of year in spring, they get all of these beautiful pots in. So you're gonna have the best selection if you go early. I really like white pots. In fact, all of my house plants inside are in white pots. And I have a spider plant that actually needs to be potted up. So I am going to be um, looking to see if I can find a planter for my spider plant. That's a good option so far. That's the size I would need. I can kind of eyeball it and tell. So $12.99 for that one. This one's pretty too, but I think it's similar in size to what I currently have. And that one's $9.99. And that one has a plug in there, but you see how it does have a drain hole. You would just have to take out that plug to make sure that it drains. Now you could always make drain holes in ceramic pots, but you would need a special bit. So it's a little bit more difficult to do. So it's just easier to buy them already um, with a drain hole. This is a pretty one too down here. $19.99 for that one. And then these look kind of like stone and these shades of blue and green. But you can see they have like such a large selection right now of some really pretty pots. This one here is the beauty and it's real stone or terracotta. It is real heavy, but they even have drain holes on the side on this one, which is excellent. And this one's $29.99, but this is a pretty large one. Probably like a 17 inch planter. Look at that pretty detail, like a rose. 
that's a real beautiful one and there's this white one here so they keep all the heavier ones at the bottom that one there looks like stone I haven't found any basket planters yet but we're still looking look at this cute gnome it has like a moss cap it looks like it's a stone finish but it's very lightweight and $24.99 and this frog is adorable if you are someone who likes to read or know a reader and also likes to garden look at this great gift let's see how much this frog is $24.99 for your reading frog so cute they have some plant stands too this is another thing that's good to find this time of year because for whatever reason even for house plants you don't find a lot of house plant stuff throughout the year mostly in the spring is when you're going to find things like plant stands um, and while you can use this outside I would say that it probably will start rusting um, over time from the elements but this is a good time to find things like this. There's some different varieties of plant stands. This one is $19.99. It looks like a multi-tier. That's a pretty boxwood wreath with this black and white bow on it. It says farmhouse decor, $49.99 for that. This one, it looks like lavender. Let's see how much that one is. $29.99. It's a good size too. Look at that. I like that one. I have one with like dogwood leaves on my door right now. Another one of those boxwood wreaths. And this one here, $16.99. Not quite like my basket, but this is a basket type planter and it already comes with a plastic insert. Look at that. It's really large, $39.99. So this would be like a floor planter. They have a really large one and then they have one one size down. So you could even like group them together. These are some really good looking faux peonies. Look at that. Now they definitely won't smell as wonderful as a real peony, but they are very pretty and springy. $29.99. Looks like a little bulldog statue. How cute is that guy? $29.99. I just looked at the price. Now you would think that this would be really heavy, but it's made out of this like um like a fiberglass material almost. So it's actually not that heavy, but really cute. Look at this bright yellow watering can. $12.99. I really like watering cans that have a gentle like rain head. Um, I've bought like three or four different ones, even just last year. In search for one that has that nice gentle rain head this one has big holes so i don't think that it would be um, that gentle but it looks like it would hold a lot of water looks like it's decent quality because it's a nice thick plastic and the color is fun look at that they even have a lavender swag i'm not really sure how long it is but you can probably hang this above your door and it matches the lavender wreath so you could have a whole lavender spring display on your front porch and never have to water anything and look at this artificial allium they're a little bit darker than real allium but not bad these actually look really good you get a whole bundle and they're $16.99 by Martha Stewart that Martha she really knows what she's doing these are pretty good looking faux flowers and if you're into these mushroom decor pieces, this one is a cool one. It looks like a bunch of rocks on top. This one is heavier, so it does feel like it could be concrete. And $24.99 for the larger one and $16.99 for the smaller one. These are pretty. A solar orb. So it looks like there's a solar panel on top. It's 9.84 inches. And um, I'm guessing when it's lit up, it's gonna look really pretty. It says hand blown art glass. Each piece is unique, solar powered for outdoor use. And let's see how much it is. So these that are almost 10 inches are $29.99, but they also have 12 inch ones. And here are the 12 inch orbs. Look how pretty that looks. And the larger ones are $39.99. And they have quite a few here, so there are different patterns and colors on them. That one is really pretty. 
some more statuary and look at these head planters. I have been enamored with these for quite a few seasons now because I really like the idea of putting a wild looking plant in there that will look like their hair, right? Like um, some kind of succulent or something. I don't love the look of the faces on these, but I love the style of a head planter. So at some point I'll find one that I really like. And here is one of those treat yourself moments. I think I'm picking this up for myself. It is a watering can, metal one, and it has those nice small watering holes on the rain head, like is, which is what I want. And it is by the British Gardening Company. It's a five liter watering can, $16.99. Adorable, look at that print on there very springy with daffodils and birds and all different types of flowers. And I found another one and this one here looks like it has some lupin on it and some poppies, some delphinium or larkspur. I love this one. So this is the one I'm picking up. And the real reason I had to come to TJ Maxx is to get socks for my teenage son, which I don't know what happens. The dryer eats socks or something because we are constantly replacing socks. And this I come outside to get my soil out of the trunk. And what are you doing right now? Hand pruning. He calls it hand pruning. So see anything that has the dead growth, like right there? Yep, dead wood. Literally just snaps right off. Easy. And every time... I walk by a maple tree and I see that, I'll just prune them. Cleaning it up. I clean it up, yeah. Yeah, this tree's been here, how long, George? About three years, four years now? I think four. We've had it for a while. I think we've had it for five years, but after the first season, yeah, we, we moved, moved it. it from the front to, to this spot. Yeah. So this was a tree that they had gifted me for Mother's Day. We had gone to Lowe's. Of course, I love to go to the garden centers on the weekends. And I had seen this blood good. It was really small. Um, I want to say it was maybe like 30 or $40. It was really affordable. Like Tiny. So we planted it in the front bed just so that it could grow for a little while. Actually, I thought that's where I wanted it. Um, but then it started to get too big for its spot. And I moved it back here, which I think is going to be a really great spot for it. And it's been happy because this tree has put on a ton of growth um, and it's looking really good. So any day now it's going to start um, leafing out. All of the buds have started to swell. You can see here. And so that's always a good sign. Yeah. So this is probably one that we should prune because it's crossing here. Yep. So, yeah. But when I don't have pruners, I just do it with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> no pruners <laughs> equals hand pruning. Still getting the job done. That's right. A couple of days ago, it was a really nice afternoon. So we had come out here after work and George started pruning some of the Japanese maples. He actually left some of the pruned pieces over there on the patio. But I was admiring how some of this moss has been growing so beautifully between these pavers here. This is a small patio that we have on the side of our shed. And years ago when we set these pavers, um, there was sand between all of the grooves. But over time, the sand has settled and it's given an opportunity for all of this moss to grow in. And I'm just really loving the way that it looks, the moss almost serving as a grout on these pavers really reminds me of like an English garden, which is really beautiful. George, you're gonna be happy to know that I didn't smuggle home any plants today. Just a bag of dirt. Oh, just dirt. Just dirt. Well, I did get one of the garden thing, but no plants today anyway. It's good. Yeah. We're too early in the season. We are, yeah. I'm gonna pot up my seedlings. But let me show you the wicked cute um, watering can that I got. I got socks, but of course I got this too. Isn't it so cute? Yeah, that's cute. Right? A little watering can. Because you know how sometimes the big ones are too big? If you want to just water a small plant, yeah. you have more control over the small one. And it's got the little holes, so it won't, like, Perfect. douse your plant with water, you know? You Look, and now you're off the hook for buying me a watering can for Mother's Day. Okay. Yeah. That works. Yeah. All right. So that is it for today's video. Just doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, getting ready for all of the spring things. Now that I have my potting soil, I'm going to work on potting up the seedlings and fertilizing them for the first time. Um, so that will probably be in one of my upcoming videos. And thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos. And we'll see you soon.